In the last decade, a new trend emerged in India, the Canada obsession. All you had to do was pick a youngster. Just ask them, where do you want to study or work? More often than not, the answer was Canada. It was like the golden ticket. Just get there and everything will be fine. But maybe not. The government of India has released some numbers. It tells us how many Indian students died abroad. The number is 403 in the last five years. And we have the country-wise division. Guess who tops this list? Canada with 91 deaths since 2018. At the second place is the UK with 48 deaths. And then comes Russia with 40. The US with 36. Do we know the cause of death? The government says there are multiple causes. Some are accidents, some are natural deaths, and some are because of medical conditions. But what about foul play? The foreign ministry spokesperson was asked about this. Listen to his response. Canada does happen to numerically be the highest, but I would, I would uh, urge that they be looked at in, the, in relation to the total number of Indian students in that country. Plus, we would need to see whether um, these are caused by uh, you know, violence, is there car accidents, uh, you know, we don't know. And that's a fair point. Canada has the largest Indian student community, some 300,000 of them. Others are not even close. Russia has 15,000 Indian students. The US has 200,000. The UK has around 55,000. In that context, the numbers are not a surprise. But you see, being alive is a low bar. We need to look at other factors as well. Like, is there discrimination? Are your basic needs taken care of? Has the move abroad worked? And for many Indians in Canada, the answer is no. Let's look at discrimination first. Indians and Indian establishments have become a target recently. More than a dozen temples have been attacked since 2022. So have Indian businesses. Many of them have complained of extortion. This week, the South Asian business community met opposition leader John Rustad. They said gangs threaten their shops. But it's not just vandalism and extortion. In some cases, Indians have been killed. Like 21-year-old Kartik Vasudev, he was shot dead last year outside a metro station. Or Harmandeep Kaur, she too was killed last year. Kaur was working as a private security guard. She was attacked with a rod by a Canadian national. And these were not just murders. They were also hate crimes. In July this year, another Indian was killed, Gurvinder Nath. He was delivering food past midnight. Multiple suspects tried to attack him and steal his car. Nath lost his life in that incident. His mother later died by suicide. So that's an entire family destroyed. Now, this last case was random, but it does tell you what the risk is. Many Indian students take up jobs in Canada. Some deliver food. Others drive an Uber. If things go wrong, any of them could be next. And the situation is not getting better for them. This week, three movie halls showing Indian films were targeted, all of them in Toronto, all of them within a space of three hours. As the movie began, masked men entered the hall. They sprayed some unknown substance on the audience. Many of them started coughing in the end, and the movie halls had to be evacuated. Do you think that's a coincidence? Absolutely not. It was a targeted attack. What is Canada's government doing about it? They say they're investigating, like they're investigating all the other cases. But where is the political will? Canada is busy protecting designated Khalistani terrorists. They will kick up diplomatic storms without evidence. They will accuse foreign governments on a hunch. But what about persistent anti-India attacks? And forget ordinary Indian students. Canada cannot even protect Indian diplomats and missions. In August, death threats were issued against the Indian High Commissioner. It wasn't even a covert one. It was issued publicly on social media. And what does all of this tell you? That there is no fear of government reprisal. It's a free pass for anti-India elements in Canada. And there is a message here for the Indian students as well. Rethink your choices. Many of them already are, in fact. From July to October, there's been a drop in applications by Indian students, a drop of 40%. Many of them realize that Canada is not worth it. And no, it's not because of the Hardeep Nijjar saga. Justin Trudeau made those allegations in the month of September. This downward trend began before that. 
The choice is now Canada's. International students are a big money spinner for them. Around 40% of them, 40% of foreign students in Canada are Indians. It's Ottawa's duty to make them feel welcome. And how do you do that? By making all Indians feel safe and welcome.